Welcome to the Hermitcraft recap, my name is Lea XP captions on this video were provided by Leara and it figures that the one week Pixel Rifts goes on a vacation is the one when too much anticipated Hermits come back and freaking decked out 2 is finished. And aside from stress monster and Iskel being loose on the server, the new Bad Wars variant by Exuma got played, XB Crafted is starting a server wide event and there's leaked season 10 discussions floating around somewhere out there on the internet. Much as I'm honored to be the one getting to tell you, it is a lot of ground to cover, and judging by last week's shenanigans, covering ground can take up to 10 hours. So let's waste no time and dig right into all the events and mishaps that occurred on the Hermitcraft server this week. Starting with the aforementioned Iskal and Stress Monster, because they too are bringing a new minigame into the mix. Okay. 3, yeah. 2, 1, go, 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 go! Did you, did you try to dodge it? <laughs> Their 20 ways to die in the West idea stems from the run minigame Iskal made a few seasons ago. Yes, run, as in random unfair nonsense, the game of luck and parkour that Keralis got deeply addicted to. We can only hope that the new strain of madness invites just as much of an obsession because Iskal happens to run low on diamonds actually. I had nearly 9 stacks of diamonds, of which I now have... 49. The trick about the 20 ways to fail is that it involves less of the failure and more just of falling. At least the first couple of levels so far you just need to luck out and not be pushed off by the angrily extending pistons. <laughs> it's not 20 ways to succeed, it's 20 ways to fail. Yes! Oh! She's done it! No, no, see that's the point. Just how far the Hermes will push their luck remains to be seen. But in the meantime, both Stress and Iskal have been walking on their bases behind the scenes, and just how much they have done is truly staggering. And come on, it wouldn't be me if I didn't point out that Stress Monster School Halloween Mansion might actually be finished in time for Halloween. She just didn't specify of what year. What is that? No! Oh my god, that weren't there earlier! Was that false? Happy to see her neighbors back, False Symmetry does not hesitate to give them some money on the down low. Certainly helps that she herself got a full diamond block from the crown generator button, which is still alive somehow? What? I don't know, but anyway, I guess I got a new crown now, but I'm not wearing it because uh, I've got someone that's aiming from, from my head, so... Um... Doesn't hurt that False is out there scoring some favors from the other minigame people. Be it Randog and his intense race truck, or Zombie Cleo and their blood on the Watchtower. Or whoever's blood on the Watchtower. I don't know whose blood Cleo uses. Like, Force has been a godsend at this point. Like, they've, they've helped me, like, so much. And, like, we know that, and that's fine. But she didn't have to go this hard. That's all I'm saying. What's certain is that the Murder Town Salem Mafia game will be opening its doors within the near future, as Cleo is very happy with Fawcett's additions, and because once the set dressing is done, the game can be played with just some cardboard pieces. So yes, I have at least seven Hermits willing to play that have signed up for it, probably more because the Hermits are not... I don't know if you realize this, Hermits are not great at signing up for things. Um, but if they say they'll be there, then they'll be there. Before Cleo can squeeze the life out of the server mates, they focus on bringing the life to their own base. Being an owner of an Atlantean castle simply doesn't hit as hard when it's just empty, so they begin populating the halls and rooms of their base with visitors and servants, as well as some remarkably adorable decorations, such as this tiny hermit crab on the table. And this has been your hermit crab recrab. Please laugh. DocM77 continues the interior decoration motif, though he's yet to pick out the wallpaper. The idea of giving his perimeter base some actual walls would certainly make it easier for me making the Hermitcraft recap thumbnails. I'm looking into converting some of the amazing fan art we received this season into gigantic murals. But the sheer amount of material needed to cover up each side is quite an obstacle. As usual, Doc solves the issue with game-breaking amounts of redstone, even if this time the game fought back and apparently reset the chunks Doc's Dragon Egg duping machine is in. And now, as I got nothing to lose anyways, as the whole server bonded against me pranking, I don't care. I make my own rules. <laughs> and I say is here because Doc has already put the thing back together. Only difference being the eggs are now sand blocks, and they're duplicating specifically 
so Doc can make as much colored concrete as he needs to smooth over the endless caves of the perimeter sites. And in case he needs some black color, there's apparently still plenty of sugar boxes of obsidian in the system, from the time Exumavoid was farming the end spawn platform. We of course know exactly where all the remaining obsidian went, thanks to both Doc and Joe Hills putting out their perspective of the Bad Wars event Exuma organized. To remind you, in this version both teams are actually stuck in a wall and need to break their way through to the enemy bed, uncovering materials, tools and weapons along the way. Initial setup apparently took 12 hours to build, so it's gonna be a little while before the rematch. <laughs> Gotta make sure like one of their guys doesn't come over to our side though. Joe, Cubs on you. I'm in a hole with Cub. Good luck. I know. This match, however, already brings in quite a few surprises. For example, the entire time there was a secret insta death timer on Joe Hills, who actually had to pick up his kid from school. So good thing they didn't play any longer, huh? But there are also more shocking developments to Joe's version of the video. As one comment points out, and I quote. I genuinely didn't realize the previous version was unedited. To be fair, it's 1am here, so Doc swearing, mystery season 10 skimming and Hypnos cut yelling in the background all flew completely under my radar. Apparently all these things were in the original pre-edited version of his video. Which is not a big deal at all, accidents happen, especially when you edit on a time limit. All I'm, all I'm asking for is the soundbite of Hypnos cut. I would like to hear that, please and thank you. Vintage Beef plans a much more sporadic battle for our hermits. The TCG Hunger Game Island continues to transform into a fully custom map. This time, Beef focuses on the beach shore detailing and dips his toes into the Amostan detailing all just to add some surface really having a good time. And one guy probably not so much. Then you got this guy over here who was buried by his kids. Of glow, his kids are now gone. There is nobody else on the beach other than this poor buried soul. His face is grey beef, the man is dead. There's also a certain hilarity in watching beef mark a crevasse on the island as off limits with a giant no sign on the same server that last week built giant terrain over much bigger hole for 10 hours. Seriously beef, was there like a shortage of dirt afterwards? In contrast, XB Crafted plans a game that spans the entire server. Named Third Degree, the new game offers a well of opportunity for fanatists and wiki editors alike. Because essentially, we're doing truth or dare here, but with no dares and fries the truths. Upon being tagged, a hermit will stop by the special third degree booth and get assigned a random new victim. From there, they must tag the victim by asking them three questions and receiving the answer. Call-ups are plenty, hilarity ensues. After a couple weeks and everyone that is interested in participating has entered their name, a random name will be drawn by me. Uh, that person will then draw a random name, then come up with three questions to ask whoever they have to ask whoever they have drawn. But before any of that, gotta make sure the game he already built works. So XB gives the good or spy another test run, and sure enough, spy glasses still function on the server, and so does looking at stuff. Funnily enough, Captain 135 has had an early start on running around asking people for things. For the museum book collection, Cap has hunted down many hermits and convinced them to write something worth reading, with a varied degree of success. Enter good times with Scar, or rather exit good times with Scar, at every opportunity. Is that a book I see signed though? He is back! Is the Hawkeye book done? It's the most cringy comic book, have you... Let me rephrase that. The most cringy comic book you've ever read is now done. Cub had to write his own hot guy fanfiction just to have something signed by Scar in the library. Only for Scar to bring in his essay, uh, Ghost Written by ChatGPT. The museum does recover some authentic artifacts. The missing pieces of Sir Cubzalot armor got found by Keralis. Quite telling that he uncovered all these priceless pantaloons in the same video he built an automated storage sorting system. Mazuma Gates! You little genius face! I'm, I'm impressed that it works, but I've just seen scars. And he's got them all over the place. Not to worry, the next big cleaning event will have just as much trouble now that Keralis visited the newly opened Scarland and has absolutely flooded his inventory with merch. But some Scarland visitors suspect there's more to the park than meets the eye. I think Scar's trying to turn us all into furries. These are some powerful words here to come out of a mouth of a person who's essentially a house girl. Still on his ranch, B00 puts together a cathedral to keep all his favorite steeds in. 
which surely should be called a horsedral, but I must apologize. It deserves some respect as a place of horseship. I've been playing around with more gothic style and using some different things like levers and glass to help pull and push walls around. That being said, there is certainly some sort of blasphemy being committed, as Zedov comes in to convince BWO to give him the slowest horse possible. <laughs> What's wrong with this horse? Oh, now it moves. Now it moves. Look at that. <laughs> okay. Naturally, it's all but as advancement challenge, and it should be, in theory, possible to breed out a horse so slow it barely moves. But for now, they get the same result by combining the slowness potions, cobwebs, and soul sand. Or, you know, standing still. There's a variety of not movement in the game, as it turns out. Well, looks like I've got a lot of horse braided and fading to do, but uh, it's going to be a long old journey, but we're beginning, and one day we will have the slowest horse in the history of the game. And finally, there's Tango Tech. And what am I to say here? Decked Out 2 is feature complete. Watch his videos for extra detail, let me assure you, it is worth it. There's news concerning the final level of the event too, and they are quite exciting. For one, the last part of the dungeon is called the Burning Dark. And that's some ultra kill level name if I ever heard one. For two, the unblocking of the finale will require the Hamas to walk together and pay extra attention while exploring the dungeon. Both of which sounds very much unlike them especially while being chased by wardens and ravagers. Even then, the game is not open yet. Feature complete here just means it's a closed beta. So Tango will be running the game over and over and over now, trying to work out all the kinks and fix all the redstone. It's nail-biting, exciting, triumphant, and I'm just so very happy that it allows me to say that Tango is currently out there getting the runs. And that's just about it for this week's recap. My name has been ZloyXP, captions on this video were provided by Liara. Don't forget to leave a like while you're still here, and subscribe so you won't miss future recaps. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.